and there's so many wonderful women who are in one way or another contributing to the archive and whose works are in the archive, even if them themselves were not part of it. We undoubtedly have to start with, with Rahel Auerbach, who is the person most readily associated with women in the archive because she was one of the survivors. She was one of three survivors. She was a writer, critic, a journalist, already well known before the war and very active in, in Jewish literary circles before the war. Um, and in the ghetto, and I think this shows us really clearly who Ringelblum would choose to associate with and who are the perfect people to bring in information. She was, she headed a soup kitchen. And in her fascinating essay on, uh, on, on the workings of, of soup kitchens, uh, she described as an extremely astute observer how people who come in the kitchen, so people who are at that point already very poor, very often for, for many of them, that bowl of soup which they're getting was the only, was the only meal they had during that day. And she was describing her quote unquote customers coming in the kitchen. And then she was describing the decline, the physical, her health, the health failing. Uh, and the journey towards death, basically, because of course, one super day was not enough to, um, to sustain anyone. So she created this incredible piece of ghetto history and description of this one element of ghetto history, which could only be captured by someone like her, someone who worked in this capacity, who could, who really described people on, the, uh, on the verge of death. She also wrote her own diary, which is an, another type of document contained in the archive. It's a personal diary. It's a very intimate diary, actually. It's a very intimate piece of writing in which she describes ghetto reality and she also describes her own emotions and her own reactions to it and her own personal internal world. It's a piece of writing of extremely high literary value as well and one of probably the most important documents in the archive, but one uh, which also should be read for the, by those who, are, who want to know more about, about how people reacted to it was happening around them. On top of it, I should add that Rahel Alba, as I said, survived and was one of the key people driving uh, driving the search for Inga Bumakai uh, after the war. So uh, she remained a very strong woman also after the war. And that she leaves Poland after the uh, archives have been, the, the two caches have been unearthed and begun to be catalogued. And she, like I believe the Vassars, who we'll meet later, um, moved to Israel. And we know that she serves as a witness as the Eichmann trial. What is her work as she moves forward with her life? She does work a lot on, on, on uh, testimonies from the Holocaust. She does, she's among people who are working in, uh, in Treblinka with the Central Jewish Circle Commission, right? She actually wrote extensively about it as well. Uh, she was working, collecting testimonies. So she was, Till, till the end involved in, in documenting in one way or another the history, history of the Holocaust. And, and we can, I think, see it also with, with other life stories. Those people do keep work, they, they keep working till the very end. Whether that end comes uh, in the ghetto, whether they, they manage to survive, like, like those three survivors from the archive. To further explore Jewish Poland, subscribe to our channel and click the bell to always stay up to date.